Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to review my new telescope, a 15-inch ultra-compact Obsession Dobsonian Telescope. Obsession is a United States telescope manufacturing company located in Lake Mills, Wisconsin, and founded by Dave Kriege in 1989. They specialize in large aperture premium Dobsonian telescopes. And in 2008, they introduced the Ultra Compact series of Dobsonian telescopes, which use a minimalist design so that you can get big aperture that's still portable enough to fit into a sedan or a compact car and transport it to a dark sky site. The Ultra Compact or UC telescopes come in 15 inches, 18 inches, or 22 inches of aperture. And they make a line of classic Dobsonians in 12 and a half inch, 15, 18, 20, and 25 inches. But mine is an ultra compact 15 inch or 381 millimeter aperture. And it has about 1500 millimeter focal length, making it F4. All the Obsession telescopes except the 12 and a half inch or F4. The 15 inch has four times the light gathering capability of an eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain. The 15 inch has a limiting stellar magnitude of 15.5 and a Dawes limit of 0.36 arc seconds, which is the same on the classic design, but what makes the ultra compact different is that it's much more compact and it's lighter. The way that Obsession makes the ultra compact so compact is that instead of having a wooden mirror box like the classic Dobsonians have, the ultra compact has what Dave Kriege calls a virtual mirror box that is just a rocker base, altitude bearings, somewhere to put the mirror and attach the truss poles and not much else. It's a very sleek and minimal design. The virtual mirror box with the 15 inch mirror in it weighs only 45 pounds, but you won't even have to lift that much because all Obsession Dobsonian telescopes come with wheelbarrow handles that attach to the sides of the mirror box for easy transport. And here's the reason why I didn't want to use the wheelbarrow handles. I have to remove this encoder arm because here's where the wheelbarrow handle goes. But you just remove these two screws if you order the Obsession Telescope with the Argo Navis navigating system, the altitude encoders go exactly where the wheelbarrow handle goes on that side. So you have to remove the altitude encoder and this arm and install the wheelbarrow handle to move it to where you want to observe. And then you have to remove the handle and reattach the encoder and I thought that was going to be a lot. So for a while, I kept the telescope on the Dobsonian cart that I had made. Well, Omar did. <laughs> but I had to use a step stool because the cart raised the telescope three inches. And I didn't like using the step stool. One advantage of the Ultra Compact Obsession Telescope is that the eyepiece is at 59 inches maximum and for most people you can observe anywhere in the sky without the need for a ladder and let me tell you that's a very nice feature i keep my obsession telescope in the garage which is where i am now and it's freezing in here <laughs> and with the wheelbarrow handles attached i can wheel it out into the driveway and remove the handles, put the altitude encoders on, and then reverse the process at the end of the observing session, and then wheel it back into the garage with the wheelbarrow handles, and it doesn't take that long. The telescope comes with six one-inch steel reinforced truss poles that are connected together, making it very easy to install the truss poles, and the upper tube assembly only weighs six pounds, and it's also very easy to install on the truss poles. The 15 inch ultra compact telescope comes standard with a starlight instruments 
Feather Touch 2 inch dual speed focuser with a one and a quarter adapter, which is a very nice buttery smooth focuser. And it comes with this tail rad that's already connected to the upper assembly. And it comes with this tube that you can either put lead shot or sand in it. And it goes on top of the telescope to make the telescope balanced. And this is a very well balanced telescope. I put slingshot in my tube and I taped it down so I didn't get lot all over the mirror. Fully assembled, the telescope weighs about 65 pounds. The heaviest thing on it is the 15 inch primary mirror, which is two inches thick and a very high quality diffraction limited mirror. The primary mirror was made in the United States in Anza, California by Ostahowski Optics. It's made out of fused silica with 96% reflectivity, enhanced aluminum coatings, and it has a center mark on it for precise collimation. And it comes with an interferometry certification. And mine has 0.86 Strel ratio, which is incredible. This box just came, it's very heavy. It weighs 38 pounds. I have no idea what it is. Ostahowski Optics, I did not buy anything. My goodness, it says it's glass. Maybe it's a Christmas present somebody sent late. <gasps> I know what it is. Oh my goodness, this is the mirror for my Obsession Telescope, 15 inches. Hand ground by Ostakowski Optics. It has a Strel ratio of 0.862. Now I just need the rest of the telescope to put it in. After you place your order for the telescope, the primary mirror comes separately from Ostakowski directly, and you have to install it. But it wasn't hard to install. The secondary mirror is 2.6 inches, and it comes pre-installed and it has a premium multi-dielectric coating on it that also has 96% reflectivity that Dave Kriege claims gives the optical system an extra two inches of aperture. <laughs> I can't verify that, but the optics on this telescope are phenomenal. They're ultra sharp, crystal clear, high contrast, beautiful, beautiful optics. The telescope also comes standard with a 12 volt cooling fan that you'll need since the primary mirror is two inches thick. And it comes with an upper and lower baffle. Here's the upper baffle to block out light. And best of all, each telescope comes with a plaque engraved with your name on it. It's on the bottom of the telescope, so you can't really see it, but it's kind of neat. So, as you can see, this is a fine premium Dobsonian telescope with incomparable optics on it. So what's the catch? The catch is it's very expensive. Mine was on sale for $5,995 US dollars, which sounds pretty reasonable for such a fine instrument with 15 inches of aperture. But that doesn't include the shroud, which is essential on a truss tube Dobsonian telescope and the shroud was $200. Other things that you'll need to add on are the Paracor Coma Corrector, since this telescope is F4 and will have significant coma, and the Paracor was $475. Other things that you can add but are not essential are a dew heater for the secondary mirror, which I added, and that was $85, and you can buy a two inch Barlowed laser collimator, which keeps the laser from moving when you insert it into the focuser and it's much more precise than a regular laser collimator. And this was $185. And you can add the Argo Navis navigating system that comes with precise encoders. And then you could push the telescope to the targets in the Argo Navis database and it's installed for you for $895. And you can even add the servo cat and the servo cat will power the telescope in combination with the Argo Navis to make it a fully go-to telescope. 
The servo cat was $2,600 installed when I bought my telescope, but I think it's gone up now to $3,495 installed. So yes, this telescope, telescope was on sale for $59.95, but you really must have a shroud, and that's another $200. And Dave told me that at F4, the paracore was essential also for $475. So total, including the essentials, was $6,679, which is still pretty reasonable for such a fine 15-inch telescope. The other items you can add are really luxury items, but since I was heartbroken after breaking the corrector plate on my 12-inch Mitt Casagrain Artemis, I went all out, <laughs> and I got the Argo Navis, the Servo Cat, the Dew Heater for the Secondary Mirror, uh, the paracor, the light shroud, and since Obsession Telescopes is an original equipment manufacturer, they're able to sell Teleview eyepieces at a discount. So <laughs> I also splurged on an awesome 31 millimeter Nagler 2 inch eyepiece that is incredible. And I bought the Barlowed Laser Collimator that makes collimating very easy. To pay for all of these exorbitant add-ons to this very nice telescope, I sold the following <laughs> equipment. I sold Artemis for parts, since it was broken. I sold my ruined EQG mount for parts. I sold my Red Cat 51. I sold an SD Boney 30mm guide scope. I sold my ASI 290mm guide camera. I sold my Mi Zero image shift focuser. I sold my custom made Rigel Systems electronic focuser. I sold my 7mm Nagler eyepiece. I sold my 10 inch Meech McCast grain. I sold my ASI Air. And I sold my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro telescope mount and a few other miscellaneous um, astronomy items. So the telescope is amazing, and the optics are just way better than mass-produced Dobsonian telescopes. I looked at so many objects that I just couldn't believe my eyes. I saw the filaments in the Crab Nebula. I felt like I was walking in space on top of the Orion Nebula. I saw the Cone Nebula, and I had the most amazing look at the Rosette Nebula. It looked like a thick, dark cloud of smoke, and it was mind-blowing. I nearly fainted when I saw it. The Rosette Nebula is very large, and it wouldn't fit entirely in the 31 millimeter Nagler, even though this eyepiece has an 80-degree field of view. But I was wandering around the um, star cluster at the center, and I saw the whole nebula, and it was well-defined and brilliant and beautiful. I also had very nice looks at Mars and at Jupiter. Wow! I do have to confess, I have to stand on my tiptoes, but I'm short. But the moon! Oh my word! <laughs> the craters! It's like I'm standing on the moon! Wow! The detail I can see is phenomenal, stunning, oh wow. And that's just to name a few memorable things that I've looked at so far with this telescope. So the telescope has exceeded my expectations in terms of the observing experience and pleasure. I know you won't believe this, but it has even sharper image than what I saw on the best nights with Artemis, my 12-inch Mitt cast grain. Yes, it has three more inches of aperture than Artemis has or had, but the views in this telescope are very sharp, crystal clear, and high contrast. The optics are non pareil Now, this telescope is great, but it's not perfect. So let me tell you a few downsides to it other than the price. The telescope has a lot of plastic on it for such an expensive piece of equipment. The knobs that hold the truss tubes in place are plastic, and the dust cover for the primary mirror is plastic water heater basin that I already cracked. And it's not anything wrong with the telescope itself, but if you add the Argo Navis and the Servo Cat to the telescope to make it fully go to, you have to watch the cables <laughs> vigilantly so they don't snag on anything as the telescope slews or rotates. 
and there's nowhere to put the battery. And I did snag the cable one night and it pulled off the altitude cable, which is another thing wrong with it. And it only applies to the go-to system though, not the telescope itself. The altitude cable will come off if you disengage it too far and it's very easy to do that. And the Argo Navis runs off four 2A batteries that <laughs> died before I can finish my session. <laughs> now it is very cold here in Montana in wintertime and most sane people would not even go out most nights <laughs> when I do. It took me a long time to set up the Argo Navis and the Servo Cat Although Bill at ServoCat was wonderful and he helped me a lot with some issues I was having. And Dave Kriege was wonderful also. <laughs> he personally answered all of my many emails. <laughs> He's great. One last thing I don't like is that the light shroud doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the telescope because the ultra compact just has a virtual mirror box to save space and um, weight and there's nowhere for the shroud to attach all the way to the bottom so instead the telescope comes with a plastic baffle for the bottom and it gets in the way of the primary mirror this is it and I don't like it and I am afraid it's going to scratch the mirror and you have to lift up the shroud to get the mirror off and on and if you order an obsession telescope be prepared to wait a while for the mirror and for the telescope to arrive since they're handmade. I think I waited six weeks for my telescope to come, but that wasn't too bad. So those are the downsides to this telescope, but they're far outweighed by the incredible, beautiful optics, the wonderful balance of the telescope by the design. It moves around very smoothly and it stays where you point it. And it's very easy to set up and get going and easy to put away each night. And I live in a Bortel 3, so I haven't had to transport it anywhere, but it's very compact and it would easily fit in my Wrangler if I do decide to take it to an even darker site, which I might. So, do I recommend the Obsession Ultra Compact 15 inch Dobsonian Telescope? Hell yeah! If you can afford it, this is a phenomenal telescope that could possibly exceed the sublime views and absolute joy provided to me by my beloved Artemis. Now I just have to name her for him. I thought of Apollo since Apollo was the twin brother of Artemis, but NASA has kind of co-opted that name. And also my family didn't like it. I also considered Henrietta Swan Levitt, but that's a mouthful. And who names a telescope Henrietta? Well, the Chabot Space and Science Center did name their 36 inch reflector Bertha, no, Nelly. <laughs> so we'll see. I'll let you know in the next episode what I came up with. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.